morning. My name is James Malonis and I am one of the directors of the Ontario Real Estate Association and I'm also the 2020 chair for the Young Professionals Network Committee. Today we have two incredible speakers here to share with you my chair, good positive messages and really kicking off September the right way. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my good friend and realtor from the Bancroft region, Cheryl Easton. Morning, good morning everyone. Good morning, Cheryl. The floor it is so great to be here. Um, we're having a little bit of a technical uh, difficulty in that I'm having a hot flash right now. So that's why you're seeing the uh, my my uh, my hair flying around a little bit. So thank you so much for having having me. Um, I was delighted to receive the voicemail message from James asking me to please uh, be part of today's uh, Zoom meeting with you all. And uh, truly an honor to be able to uh, be with my Aria family. I love any opportunity that I can get to do that. And so I jumped at the chance. I went in that voice message, uh, James left a message in because I was looking to know, like, what do you want me to talk about? What are we going to be uh, discussing today? And this is literally, this is what he left me. He said, uh, he said, Cheryl, I want full on Cheryl, preacher Cheryl, hands in the air, come to Jesus moments. And, and uh, while I appreciate the enthusiasm, I don't think that uh, we're going to go quite that far today. Um, it's uh, it, it's a it's certainly a uh, I'm not going to convert you quite over to the uh, realtor and motivator uh, dogma, if you want to say. But uh, that said, I'm happy to connect with you. Um, you know, we are uh, we're a lot further down the road than we were maybe a few year, a few months ago when when we last met for the most of us, we were at reality 2020 and we had uh, just an amazing time together with a very large group of realtors. And I have to say, I miss you all so much. I had the privilege of speaking there. I had the privilege of uh, sharing the stage with my good friend, David Greenspan, who's coming on in just a few minutes. But you know, the world was different then. The world had, it was a lot quieter. It wasn't quite as complex. We were in that rest period just before getting ready for the new spring market. And then COVID hit. And it changed our world. And you know, sometimes things come along in our lives where they draw lines in the sand, where things, where we start to reference things from before that time to past that time. A great example of that is 9-11. We, we speak about history sometimes, you know, pre-9-11, what the market was like pre-9-11, what the market was is like post-9-11. And I believe that COVID-19 is going to very much behave like the same thing. I'm gonna pull us into a, a, uh, a PowerPoint screen and then I'll come back and visit you a little bit later in person. So here we are, we're in September. It's a day of new, it, it, it's a time of new things. We often think of it as a time of, of new starts, new, uh, you know, first day back to school. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a sad start because sometimes it means the beginning of an empty nest for, uh, for people around us. And it's about what we do with that time. COVID came to us. And now we are all on the other side of that about 120 days later. And here we are. And what are we going to do with that time? We're all so desperate for a new beginning. We're all so desperate for a new start. We're so also desperate to get away from COVID. But I think we have to look at the lessons that were part of that. And I'm going to draw a correlation to the Apollo 13 successful failure as it was uh, deemed and I'm going to show you the Apollo 13 COVID-19 connection and how it affects you. About 50 years ago on April the 11th 1970 the uh, Saturn V rocket that was carrying uh, the Apollo 13 mission that was launched from Kennedy Space Center um, took Jim Level, Fred Hayes and Jack Squigger on what was intended to be humanity's third landing on the moon. These were, these were breakout days for the space race. We'd already won it. We had already, um, we had already made a landing and we were pushing for more. Sorry. 
I hear that we are not having a screen share. Okay, so we're going to have to go without it. Um, so we had already made that space race. We had already landed on the moon. We had already put people there. Science advancements were being made. Thank you, David Greenspan, for that, uh, for that notice. I appreciate that. But then something horrible happened. On, on a routine stir of the O2 tanks, the, uh, the whole side of the command module blew out. And those three astronauts were left. They were left suspended in nothingness. And they had to find a way to solve the problem. They had to find a way to make things better. They had to adjust. They had to learn to communicate from thousands and thousands of miles away to a place so that they could solve a problem that seemed unsolvable. What made it even worse was the problem they needed to solve was air filtration. In the lunar module, the air filters were square. In the command module, the air filters were round. Who would have thunk we can put a man on the moon, but we can't put our filters in place to go from square to have them either the same in square in both modules or the same in circle on both modules. But they did it. They organized themselves, they got the communication going, they solved the problem, and they moved on. And six days later, having never landed on the moon, having had to go around it and slingshot to get the energy to come back, they landed in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, safe and sound. And everybody at NASA breathed a collective sigh of relief, thankful for their safety. But from that successful failure, lessons were learned and things were applied that made the difference and have made the difference, including up, up to and including today's, um, uh, what they're using in, in, for, for today's uh, space exploration. So let's shift back to COVID. Something has happened. We have come together to solve a problem. We have made changes that hopefully will fix the problem. The question to you is, how have you adapted to this situation? COVID did one of two things. COVID either made you stop and think while we were in that um in that uh hold and secure pattern and think okay well how am i going to adapt to this newness what can i do um you know i spent a lot of time uh, making phone calls and uh it's reaching out to other realtors developing relationships solidifying relationships i um i made sure that i reached out to them not to see necessarily about real estate but just to check into them in with them and make sure they were okay i appealed to their humanity and i spent about 90 days doing that and as a result my business once we were allowed to go back to work safely has increased fantastically so i made a choice there are those that looked at COVID as a, uh, a hard stop, a dead stop. There's nothing we can do. The, um, the real estate market is tanking. I have to sit here in my pajamas and do nothing. Or maybe, you know, attend however many uh, Zoom meetings that were available at the time. And unfortunately, once the market came up, they were not ready and they were not prepared. So th what the object of the lesson here is today in these few moments that I have with you is that we need to be very vigilant of times when lines are drawn in the sand, when things look horrible, when things look negative, and find a way to turn them into positives. Amazing things are happening. Aria, look at what Aria has done. Aria has taken this, this situation and they have applied uh, tools and resources and have paved the way to make real estate better for realtors in the future post COVID. And we can only hope that it will continue to, that COVID will continue to hopefully dissipate. We don't want to see any more suffering. We don't want to see any more, uh, any more uh, struggle, if you want to say. We only want to see us beginning to return as much as possible to normal. But thanks to ARIA, they have paved the way for that. So that is my lesson to you guys. Ask yourselves, what can I do when, the, when those hard, hard moments stop, when they come into your life? 
Am I going to use this for, to my advantage? Am I going to learn something? Am I going to apply something? What am I going to change? What am I going to do? How am I going to make my life better? How can I take something that is horrible and make it into something amazing where it's life changing for me, for the realtors around me and for the consumer? Waiting in the wings is David Greenspan, a very good friend of mine. He's going to turn his screen on here. Um, I had a really great shot for him in my uh, sharing screen. There he is. Oh, my goodness. He's in the gym. No. Nope, Wait a sec. Got to get out of the gym. There you go. Got to get out of the gym. He's in the Century 21 gym. It's been a busy day. We're working out. We're doing all sorts of day. stuff. Here, let's see if uh, that takes me back in the studio. Perfect. We're able to awesome. transform just like that. Awesome. <laughs> So by way of introduction, David is, uh, he's got realtor running in his blood. It runs blue in this man. He's the son of a realtor. He's a licensed realtor himself, for those of you who didn't know, that will come up in the quiz later. Um, and he's been active in the real estate community and environment for 15 some years. He's the co-founder and VP of Kits Keep in Touch System, a uh, industry leading marketing system. He's also the founder and CEO of Mindshare 101, a, uh, a trailblazing Oh man, all the adjectives you could use for this one. But it is a, it's an amazing program that helps re realtors to bridge the gap between their online and their offline marketing skills um, in, in an effort to achieve a ROI, higher ROI. David's mission, if you know him, you love him. I love him in spite of some things, like, like, like an tall man towards. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that's just a small little joke between David and I. Um, his mission is always to help build, realtors build the, uh, the hashtag Mindshare and to make it so that, uh, to teach you and train you so that when people reach out to you and people see you, when they think of real estate, when they think of excellence in real estate, they think of you. And he has amazing programs in line for that. Not only is he a renowned speaker, he is a marketing strategist and he is an, a coach. And he is my very good friend and he's my very good colleague. And my goodness, like for the, for the hundred people here who are waiting to see you, I introduce you to David Greenspan. Wow. That was uh, quite the introduction. It's uh, those are those things where every time it's read off, you sort of sit here kind of like looking at the ceiling going, ah, that feels yeah. really weird when people are talking about you. And I'm telling you the first thing when you said about, you know, blue or whatever you said, blue and real estate, I thought you were about to knock me on the Maple Leafs, but you know, you didn't. And then I was like, oh, and then all of a sudden you did. So, um, but I, 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 uh, there, I wouldn't have put that past you, but Cheryl, thank you for the amazing, amazing introduction. Um, what is going on, everybody? Guys, I am excited to be here. Now, we're going to try to do the same thing Cheryl did, see if we are sharing a screen now. I believe we are. Um, but, yeah, this is good. This is great. And, Cheryl, that was a powerful message. I really like uh, what you were talking about. It's going to flow very nicely into what we're going to go over today with regards to what are we looking at ahead of us? What you know? What's coming up? Where do we want to go? How do we want to deal with it? You know, how can we all finish this year and – you know, I want to say it, but I'm not going to speak French on this one. I'm just going to say we want to kick this year out the you know what, right? And bring on 2021. Let's do this already. Um, so without further ado, guys, I am very excited to be here. As Cheryl just mentioned to you, I've been in this game a long time. Um, and I just want to share that with you that, you know, the past 15, 16 years of my life has been spent uh, helping you guys really build your businesses. And what it's done is it's allowed me to get a really street level view. Um, understanding, you know, what are the challenges you guys face? What are the, uh, what are the day to days that you guys do every single day where it may slow you down? It may speed you up. It may make you feel good. It may make you hang your chair, your head down, you know, all those little things that happen. I'd like to say I've heard them all, um, and heard them many, 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 many times. Now, you know, when I started, whatever it was, 15, 16 years ago, we started this company called Kids Keep in Touch Systems. And, and this was our baby. This was, this was me. And I want you to put yourself in the same type of shoes right now, okay? Because this is part of what we're supposed to be doing every day to build our business. Started this business. So this could be you just getting into real estate. This could be you already in the game, but you're just, you're trying to get yourself to your next level. So here I am. I am in a dark room, you know, no windows in the office, and we're just starting this thing off. And I've got this black binder full of every single brokerage in the country. And I'm literally one by one calling. And I don't know what my pitch is. And I don't know what I want to say. But all I know is in order to build my business, I better get out there and start talking to people. 
And so with that, we started making our phone calls and, you know, you're, you're trying to sell people and, and literally trying to sell people on a product that they have no idea what it is. Much the same in your shoes. You're trying to get people to work with you and trust you with their absolute biggest asset of their entire life, even though they may not know who you are, you see, and that comes back to, again, what is our goal every single day? And so here I am, I'm making these phone calls and I'm getting hung up on like crazy and it hurts. It sucks. You're sitting there going like, it's not even like you can look out the window and get a breath of fresh air for a second. There was no windows in the room. It was dark, but we held through. We were consistent. We were resilient with what we wanted to do. We had a plan. And this whole thing started with this like really crazy direct mail system, um, which we still run today, which is still the best that's out there in the entire industry, north, south of the border, across the world. I'm going to put it out there. We've actually won a top three award for self-promotion marketing based on all that. But anyways, the point is we stayed consistent. In the face of all the defeat, in the face of all the challenges, in the face of all the different market shifts, we stayed consistent. And with that, I sit here with you today and I tell you that we've got this flourishing business that has been in business for 16 years where thousands and thousands of realtors have signed up for. People are using it like crazy and they're doing it to help them build Mindshare. Now, when you think about this and we think about, you know, I, I'll sit here and tell you, and we're going we're gonna to get into this Mindshare thing in a second, but I'll sit here and tell you that part of what you should be doing every single day, and you've heard this before many times, give value, connect with people reach out and build those relationships. Well, again, here we are trying to sell you a product that's going to help you do that. And every time I'm talking to somebody who calls up and says, hi, how much? Hey, can you tell me more? And we love those calls. I don't mean that in a bad way. We love those calls, but here's where it goes now. It started going from this whole thing 16 years ago of, let me just try to sell you on it. Here's the price. Here's what it does. Do you want to sign up? Instead it was, what are you trying to achieve? Where does this fit into your overall marketing plan? What struggles and challenges are you having in your business that we can help you get over? And so it started to get to a point where it was no longer a sales pitch. It became full on coaching, helping people build their business, helping you build your business. And that, that was the cool part of it because that's what afforded me the ability, the luxury, the fun to open up this, this idea around Mindshare 101. And really what it started from was, again, this concept around just building Mindshare, building Mindshare, building Mindshare. But again, by having goals, by having a vision, by knowing exactly what it is we want to achieve in life, as long as we stick to that and we're consistent, we can get there. And so Mindshare 101's turned into this, you know, full-on coaching program from group coaching to one-to-one -one coaching to really being out there to help you guys build your biz. But where did that start? I come back to something I just mentioned a moment ago about delivering value, right? What are you doing to get out there and connect with people every day? I mean, guys, I get it. We want to get up every single day and get a deal. Who doesn't? We all do. We want five deals today. But is it reality? I mean, seriously, is it actually reality? Or are we going to have more success by going and planting those seeds and getting out there and putting ourselves out there and connecting with people and then create the opportunity for down the road? Well, of course, the latter. And that's exactly what I've tried to do or I've been doing, again, consistently for the past number of years with this. And every single Monday, we talk all about video and, you know, you got to use video. And, hey, congrats. We're all on video right now, which is excellent. I mean, you're all looking at me. I can't see you. So I don't even know if you're like paying attention right now, but uh, no, <laughs> using video though is part of the world. And as Cheryl was just mentioning about, you know, what did we go through? What did we learn? Where can we go with it? It's about putting value out there, connecting with people. And guys, when we're putting value out there, we've got to recognize that it's actually free value, right? We're doing it for free. But again, this is us building mindshare. This is us connecting with more people. And so what I started doing was putting out a video every single week. Literally, I think video number 223 went out this past Monday. Every single Monday. Now, you might have seen them. You might not. You might pay attention to them. You might not. You might like them. <laughs> you might not. I'm consistent. And that's the difference. So my encouragement to you is when you think to yourself, ah, you know what, I'd like to do a video strategy, or I'd like to start blogging, or I'd like to start, you know, podcasting or whatever, whatever you're going to do, be consistent about it. 
Put a plan in place for when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, and then do it. But do it consistently. Don't just do it once. Because just doing it once and go, you know, I video or I use video. No, you don't. It's when people just start to recognize that that's what you do and that's part of who you are. You've built the mind share around it that people start to come back. Because now there's enough consistency and enough interest in what you're doing that even if I didn't like what you did this week, I know you're doing it again next week, so I'm coming back. And again, this goes into the bigger depths of our overall marketing strategy. I mean, much the same. We saw in, uh, uh, every time I think of 2020, it's like we cringe, you know what I mean? Um, and that's going to happen forever. We're all going to go 2020. Everybody's going to go, ah, I don't want to hear about it. Kind of like my leaps. But anyways, Cheryl, stop. Um, <laughs> that said, we knew in 2019 that 2019, and this, this was actually coming off the heels of 2018. We knew that 2019 was going to be the year of voice marketing the Alexas, the Google Homes, all these devices in our home. We knew that that was going to be the case. And this is where the idea of podcasting, and not that podcasting started in 2018 or 2019, it started prior to that, but it's really taken off. Why? Because when we go back to this idea of increasing my social presence, increasing my online presence, trying to drive more leads, trying to drive more value, it comes back to now, what kind of content are you putting out there for people to come and listen to you and learn from you? And guys, I had uh, Richard Silver, who many of you probably know, um, industry icon, veteran, professional, successful, all the above, was on the podcast a few weeks ago. And he said, all realtors are bloggers. Now, you might be thinking, I'm not a blogger. I don't even like to write. But think about this. And this, this is, again, where I come back to the idea between kits and mindshare, how I created my progression. And again, this is not about me. I want you to internalize this for you. When you're talking to a client, when you're reading an article, when somebody asks you a question, do you answer them or do you just look at them and like walk away? <laughs> Obviously, you answer them. Well, part of answering them is you delivering value. So why don't you take the question they asked you? Write it down in a notebook or on your phone. I don't care where you write it. Put it on a napkin if you have to. But once you write that down, think about your answer. Now take that answer and start to say, well, how can I build Mindshare with this? How can I take that question, put it out there to a whole bunch of people, my network, and share the same type of uh, question because other people are probably going to be thinking about it. Then provide an answer that other people are probably going to value. And now you've just been able to blog. Now, that could be in written form. That could be in video form. Just like you see right here, that could be in podcast form. The idea is to create content, to put it out there. And so again, with the Mindshare podcast, that's exactly what we're doing. Every single week, Wednesdays at 1 p.m., including today with Remax CEO, Mr. Adam Contos, is just about delivering value, delivering content and helping you guys learn more. Much the same, you guys helping your network learn more. Again, this comes back to how are we building Mindshare? It is too easy. The difference here, though, is are you going to do it? Or are you just going to say, yeah, I should do it. Or maybe I will do it. Or I don't know what to do. I got you. I understand that. And hence, the, you know, that's where it took me into the next progression of, of, of Mindshare was to create these events where we can bring people together to learn. And I'm not talking just learn about blogging or just learn about podcasting or, or just about this, but I'm talking a full sales strategy. What am I going to do every single day when I wake up? How am I going to get out there and build more success for myself every single day? How am I going to build more mindshare? How am I going to get more of those deals? And so just from a timing perspective, I want to share with you guys, next week, September 8th, we start the Mindshare Mastermind. Registration is open. Take that URL right now, www.themsc101.com. There's a promo code there for you. This is a fully, fully loaded marketing sales course. Check out all the details. If you got questions, get in touch. The nice thing is beyond just the course itself, you become one of our Mindshare Masters. You get to be part of our private online community where we are going to help you on a daily basis to build your business. So check all that out. If you got questions, get in touch anytime. But I want to roll into this because I want to talk about the road ahead. And I want to, I want to, um, I guess, piggyback, dovetail, sort of follow in the, in the shoes of what Cheryl was saying around what did we learn? Where are we going? What's happening? And I, I, uh, I feel it important to say this, is that although nobody really knows what's going on, 
when we look ahead, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen when we get out of here today, right? I mean, I know you're going to go to the msc101.com and get registered. But seriously, you don't know what call you're going to get. You don't know what email you're going to get. We have no idea. And I also want to remind you in that moment right now that because we don't know exactly what's ahead tomorrow or in the next few minutes from now, I also want you to remember that when you're having a bad day, it's just one day. When you're having a bad moment, it's just one moment. Do not allow any of those negative things that happen to you anywhere. The email you got, the person who hung up the phone on you, the deal you didn't get, the multiple offer situation that you wrote up 17 times and still didn't get. Trust me, I know what's going on out there. Don't let it bother you. Look at it as a learning moment. Look at it as an opportunity for you to grow because that's exactly what it is. And I want you to remind yourself and do that right now. Today is a new day. So every single thing, that's your mental reset. Today is a new day. Every single ha thing that happened just before you said that, it's done, it's over, you can't change it. But you can learn from it. So as I look at what's happened over the past six, seven months, and I look at and I pay attention to the media, and we look at the reports, and we just take a sense of, you know, the pulse of the market. I believe that no matter what the school teachers are going off about, and I'm not going to even get myself started on that one, no matter what the government is going off about, no matter what the sports leagues are going off about, I believe there's a ton of opportunity ahead for you in this market. But it's up to you. It's up to you to take advantage of it. It's up to you to make the most of these next few months so that we can finish this year strong and get the hell out of it, right? So let's talk about this. I want to go over the factors that are affecting your fall market. And then I want to talk about what you can do about that to really leverage it and to take advantage of it. Because some may look at these as challenges. Again, it depends how you look at the glass. Is it half full or half empty? You know what I mean? But a positive mindset will always take you a hell of a lot further than thinking about the negative side of the world. The, oh, it's a problem. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I know. You know what? I, what are we going to do? No, no. That's what most people do. But you can't be most people. You've got to step out above that and say, I'm going to take advantage of this. So let's look at this. Factors affecting our fall market. Number one, school. You know, what boggles my mind about this, I mean, first of all, we know that, I mean, it's like, are they going back? Are they not going back? What's happening? I know certain provinces, they're like, oh, yeah, they're going back. And I know in Ontario, it's like, yeah, they're going back. And then all of a sudden, now we just read recently that at least here in Ontario, four of the major labor unions for teachers have all said, wait a second, class sizes are too big. We know that the school bus drivers are getting upset because, well, we've reduced like class sizes or spacing and all that stuff, but the school buses haven't changed. You're still going to have two kids per seat on each seat in a full bus and the school bus drivers are like, hold on a second. Now, my point here is, <laughs> I don't know if school's going back so quick. And even if it does, are you sending your kids back? And hey, uh, I'm not judging anybody who is or who isn't, because quite frankly, my wife and I were like, let's get the kids out of this house, get them back to school, get them reintegrated with their friends, get them back to a normal life. That's our thought. But teach their own. And there is no right or wrong. You got to do what's best for you. The point is, though, is every single kid going back to school on September, whatever, the way we normally would, September 8th or something like that? Like normally, every, like literally the world changes, right? Summer's done. Kids line up on the school buses. Traffic's out of control. Everybody's going back. But is that going to happen this year? Not necessarily. And if that doesn't happen, now are people making the same type of money that they should be making when they're at home having to care for the kids? I mean, time is real, right? So, you know, are people going to have enough time to be able to work? You know what I'm saying? So we've got to look at school and say, this is a challenge because if people do not go back to work, they do not make enough money. We look at employment. Guys, unemployment rates are higher than they've been since 1976. That is scary. And the predictions are, it's only going to climb right now. Why? Because people, <laughs> you know, people need to fend or take care of their kids at home because the tall office towers downtown are not going to go back to 100% capacity. Because retail is getting its ass kicked. So because of all of that, what's going to happen now is people don't have enough money. And again, it's going to make things difficult. Well, that takes us into this part where we talk about mortgages and mortgage deferrals. 
the big banks, all six of them came out, what, back in March and said, hey, we got you. We will help you. Don't worry about your mortgage. I mean, worry about it, but you don't have to pay us right now. You can pay us in six months from now. Okay, cool. So that's good. And a lot of people took advantage of that. And again, no judgment on any of those people that did. The point, though, is six months deferral. Let's do the math. Six months happens to be now, September. So now we're going to have people that had a challenge with work, had a challenge paying their bill six months ago. We haven't seen a ton of change in our economy since then. I mean, things have picked back up. We know our real estate market's been pumping. But overall, it hasn't been like this, this, you know, we're back to normal, right? I don't think anybody can claim we're back to normal. So are the people that needed the deferrals, are they able to pay that mortgage? And then again, if unemployment rates are climbing, are they going to be able to pay? And if people aren't going back to school, are they going to be able to pay? And hell, what if this thing happens? What if there is a second wave? Like, seriously, like, are you prepared? And again, Cheryl just talked about that. What have you learned? What have you done to adapt? What have you done to adjust? I've asked this question before. My mindshare masters were on this call, and I looked at the list very quickly. You've heard me say this. Do you wait to fill up your car when it's running out of gas? Like, do you wait till the tank goes on empty to go fill it up? Or do you go fill it up before it runs out? What if you got a leak in your roof, but all of a sudden it's a beautiful sunny day? Do you figure, ah, I don't need to fix the leak? Like the hole, you know, we'll just wait. And then like, do you wait till it's pouring rain again to go and fix it? Much the same with your business. COVID hit. It changed our world very quickly. It, it, it pretty much stopped everybody's income. What have you done in the past six months to learn from that and prepare yourself for what's ahead? All of these challengers are very, very real. None of us can say exactly what's going to happen, but I want you to internalize this right now. I want you to think about this right now. And I wanna ask you, are you ready? Are you truly ready for what's ahead. Now, here's what I want to do. Personally, I want to get you revved up right now, okay? This is about digging deep. This is about going full throttle. It has been a crazy past few months. And, and, and I want to share with you that uh, in this time, I was very fortunate, I got to go on a 17-day motorcycle ride. Um, Jennifer, my wife, asked me to pick up a little bit of milk. And so uh, I went with a few buddies out to uh, Tofino, BC from Toronto on the bike. Yes, we rode all the way there and all the way back. 17 days, over 10,000 kilometers. And I got to tell you, we have the most amazing country in the entire world. I mean, I haven't seen all the other countries, but whatever. I am Canadian. I love it. Now, the other thing is this, though. By doing that, and it's, it's normal. I mean, you can think about this one. You know, we get our heads out of Toronto for a moment, let's say, or out of Ontario, and we think to ourselves, you know what? There are way more small towns than there are big cities. I mean, the land is different. The, the, the every, every locale you drive through is different. And it also means that everybody is different, okay? People are different. And so the thing is, as you start to pay attention to that, and you've got to internalize that, Thinking about every single person you deal with is a different individual. Well, if they're different, that means that not one size fits all, right? Uh, there is no one way to do everything. I mean, but here, the thing is, no matter what, it's a relationship business. I mean, you can battle money. You can battle, you know, negotiate. You can, you know, battle commission. It's all negotiable. But if you just don't like somebody, you're not going to deal with them right? We're not going to deal with that person. We're not going to hire them. And so your goal every single day when you wake up and I get it, I just want that deal. I just want the deal. So what are you doing to build relationships every day? What are you doing to get out there and meet somebody new today? What are you doing to connect with the people you know today? What do you have on your plan to do that today? Oh man, I'm so busy. I'm running around with all these buyers. I got all these offers right up. Oh, I haven't got time. Really? So what happens when the pipeline dries up a little bit? It shouldn't dry up. It shouldn't. It should never dry up because every single day you should be focused on making your calls, connecting with people, building the relationships, getting out there on social media, what I like to call building mindshare. And so again, fine, Dave. Okay, yeah, fine. I hear it all the time. You know, I build relationships. I, I, I'm with you. And, I, you know, go play golf with them. Take them for lunch. You know, I've heard it all before. And, you know, I've heard, yeah, tell, you know, call people. So what's the big magic you're telling me here? Guys, this isn't about having somebody else do this for you. 
This isn't about saying, yeah, 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 I know. This is about truly and genuinely connecting with another human being. So simple, but so profound. Okay. It really is that easy. It's not about spending money on online lead generation or social media ads or, or any big marketing campaign. If you are not going to connect with people and build a relationship with people and build that positive mind share, it's just not going to happen. So here's what I want to do. Here's what we're going to do. Okay. Here's what I want you to do and start taking notes on this stuff. If you haven't already, I know I talk very slowly. First step. I want you to define your USP, okay? Follow me here. This is what we call your unique selling point. This is what differentiates you from everybody else, okay? So here's what to do. And like I said, grab your pen, or if you're tapping away on your computer, do it. If you haven't been paying attention for the first few minutes, why? No, I'm joking. Write this stuff down, okay? Here we go. So here's what to do. How do I define my USP, Dave? Number one, I want you to write down three things that are unique about you. And I'm not going to give you examples here because I, I don't want everybody writing down the same stuff. This is important. This is what differentiates you from the other hundred people that are paying attention to this call right now. This is what differentiates you from the people in your office. This is what differentiates you from every other realtor that's in there trying to steal your dinner. So write down three things that are unique about you. Then what I want you to do is I want you to write down three things that you do all the time as part of service for your clients. So again, three things that you do all the time as part of service for your clients. Then I want you to write down three things that you're really, really good at. So like, what are you really good at? Write it down. Write down the big problem that you help solve. So again, if I was to say, you know, I got, you know, or, or you were to say, look, this is what I'm, I'm amazing at. And then if you were like dealing with this, you know, I will give you an example in this one because we've got one of our coaching clients, our Mindshare Masters, who brought this up one day, but she says, I can get anybody financing, anybody. I don't know, what do you mean? She goes, anybody. It doesn't matter what their credit score. It doesn't matter. Everything. That's the big problem she helps solve. People can't get money. She says she can do it. No problem. Maybe that's yours. What else can you come up with? So again, write down the big problem you help solve. Then I want you to write down, why are you, you, the one qualified to do this? So you've just figured out all this stuff about you. Why are you the one qualified? Okay. Write that down. Now, once you've identified all of that, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to summarize it in a short paragraph, literally type it out. Okay. Because the act of actually typing it out is what brings it from a, just a thought and makes it reality because we can now do something with that, right? And, and, and what this is going to do is this is going to, A, when you're in person with people and they're like, so like, what do you do? If you're just like, eh, I sell real estate, that's it. Like, that's it. And you might be going, well, yeah, that's what I do. No, 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 no. Let's get creative with this thing. We've heard about the 30 second elevator pitch, right? Get creative. Why you? So again, you want to summarize this so you can actually talk to people about it and you want to do it so that B, you can put it into your marketing. Again, what do you do? So that when you're talking to people or it's going out there in the, you know, again, online, social media, paper, you name it, whatever, people see a consistent message. Have I mentioned consistency yet? Have I been consistent about talking about consistency? Ha. Huh. Okay. Now that you've done that and you've created that paragraph, I just want you to break that down, chunk it right down and make this really digestible sentence. Okay. So something really short, really snappy. And I want you to think about this. And I do this all the time. And I really practice this. Um, you know, I do this most of the time with my wife or I'll throw something out there and she'll give me those looks like, what are you talking about? I go, ah, great question. Now, what have I done? I said something to her instead of her going, ah, okay. She says, what? Or she goes, tell me more. Boom. Okay. I got, I know now I've got a good, like one liner here. You know what I mean? We want people to ask us a question. We want people to want to dig deeper. Now, here's the thing. After you've done all this, okay. And before you talk to anybody about it, you've defined your USP, you've written down all these things, you, you've broken it down. You've di you know, put it into this little digestible sentence before you share it with the world, just review it. Ask yourself, just like, do I like what I see? Is this really me? 
And in fact, I got a question for you. When was the last time that you analyzed your marketing? When was the last time that you analyzed your brand and did an audit for yourself? Think about it. Think about how you help people have more success. And if you need help with any of this, like I said, get in touch with me. The second part here is, of course, to build Mindshare every single day. Guys, Mindshare is the foundational support of your business. This is you getting your message out there. You see, we've got to create a positive perception for people because perception is real. And your USP is going to help you define that. So when people see you in a you know, multitude of different places, they see a consistent message. They can see consistent branding. They see how you can help them. Now they start to create a perception. Hey, you know, you're the person that I, I, I could see myself dealing with. I like you. I trust you. I know you. I know you like you trust your business, right? So again, it's about getting out there and building the mind share. And this just bottom line means connecting with people. But I want to stress, don't let technology get in the way. Do not let technology just separate you. Um, yeah, to connect with my clients, you know, I send video emails. Hey, cool. That's cool. Like, it's good. But if you just got like a video email from me and I'm not really physically there, do you have to watch it? Do you have to reply to it? Chances are the minute you hear the voice, like not, not necessarily my voice, but you know, you're in a public place and all of a sudden you hit this thing and it starts talking. It's like, oh, mute, 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 right? We shut it down. Again, video is one channel. Social media is one channel. Your website is one channel. Your email is one channel. The best channel is this. Actually, not even this, because I can't see you guys. I can't hear you guys. I can see the little chat going off, but I can't even pay attention to that right now because we're actually here. But in a one-to-one -one conversation, that's where you and I get to connect or you and whoever get to connect. Find those real commonalities with each other. Find something that helps you guys connect. I mean, think about this, right? Social media. Social media keeps people up to date with what's going on. But the call, the call is you actually catching up. So I can post up, you know, something about my maple leafs. Why do I keep bringing that up? Cheryl, it's all your fault. But I could, James, you too, eh? But I could post something about that. And all of a sudden what happens, I start getting either, um, you know, my Leafs fans who are going to, you know, do the consoling and, and we're going to, you know, um, you know, complain. I was going to use the other word. We're going to complain about, you know, what happened. Then I can get my friends who are not Leafs fans, which everybody's a Leafs fan diehard, you know, deep down. But I'm going to get those people who are going to start ragging me on it. But now what do we have? We've got commonality. We've got conversation. We've got something to talk about. And then my good friends, well, they'll, you know, maybe they'll say you like send, them, send you random cookie baskets without their names on it. Just, you know, send their condolences. Your other ones might call you up and start ragging you, whatever it is. The point is social media can keep people up to date. The phone call, the real one-to-one, -one, that's what builds the real connection. It's active. It is happening. So again, building Mindshare every day. Think about your two audiences. You've only got two. You got people you know and you got people you don't know. And you've only got seven ways to communicate with all those people. Now, I do not have time to get into all seven ways today, but I want you guys to go to Mindshare101.com. Write that down, Mindshare101.com, and I want you to download the seven ways to communicate. It is free. It's an ebook. It's a short, easy read. But it'll go over the seven ways to communicate with another person. And it's going to show you and teach you how to build Mindshare because Mindshare equals market share. So again, Mindshare101.com. Make sure you download that. Do that as soon as we're done here. Now, the third point, how do we deal with this? How do we make sure that we are ready? It's a numbers game, period. Have I talked about consistency yet today? Okay. The more you shoot, the more you score. But you've got to have a plan. And you have to put in the effort. I mean, look, I coach, not only I coach realtors, you guys, but I coach hockey and I coach baseball and I've been coached my entire life when it comes to my sports as well and business and everything else. And coach always said to me, listen, the more no's you get, the closer you are to a yes. The same way, like, you know, the more shots you take on net, the better chance you have at scoring. You've got to embrace those no's. You've got to be happy when you get those. I mean, you can't get to yes if you don't put in the effort and just connecting on social media or clicking like or putting out one video every like six months, just calling one person a day, one person a week, 
just thinking about it and not doing anything, how are you ever supposed to achieve what you want? I mean, guys, you should know your numbers. You should know that not every call you make is going to be a complete success. It just doesn't happen for people, right? It's not reality. But you got to know that if you put in the effort and you were consistent about putting that in and you are not just doing, you know, one channel or the other channel, but you're using all the channels, you're leveraging everything. Now you're going to get out there and you're going to build that positive perception with people. And if you do, if you do just meet one new person a day, just one, then you've got a better chance of growing your business. It's not hard. And I know you might be thinking right now, well, Dave, where am I going to go meet somebody? You know, they talk about all the social days. Nobody wants to talk to each other. The coffee shops aren't letting people just sit down and do the thing. Yeah, I got it. Think about old friends. When was the last time you connected with them? Think about your contact list. When was the last time you started making phone calls? Think about social media groups, not just real estate groups, but groups of interest that you're in. Again, Toronto Maple Beliefs groups, Harley Davidson groups, whatever. What do you like? Gardening? Uh, outdoors? Drawing? I don't know. Music? Whatever. There's a group for everything. There's lots of groups for everything. Go tap into them. Get engaged with people. Build relationships with people. Again, it is a numbers game. But the biggest thing here is if you don't do it, if you just think about it, if you just hear me, but you're not listening to me right now, it goes in one and out the other. So you have to know it's on you. I can teach you. I can share it with you. We can all say it to each other. We can all sit here and agree, go, yeah, I know where my business come from. I just got to do more. But you got to know this. It's the act of doing that creates the result of having you have to actually go and do it. You can't just think about it. So I want you to take everything you just learned today. I want you to take it all in. I hope you were taking a whole bunch of notes. This right here, this is my cell phone number. Take it down. Text me. Text me when we're done if you want to. You want to talk more? You want to set up a time to talk more, to review your strategies, to just go over the plan, maybe to pick my brain on something? Please, I welcome it. Call me anytime. You may not pick it up immediately when you call, just in case I'm in a presentation on, on another meeting. But don't hesitate, because I'm not one to pick up my voicemails. Text me. Hey, Dave, it's so-and-so. Saw you on the Oreo YPN today. I'd love to connect with you for a few minutes. Can we set a time? Absolutely. No strings attached. Let's talk. Let's learn more. Because all of this that we just talked about, I mean, <laughs> no joke, it goes way deeper than anything we could, than everything we could have gone over today. Right? And for each one of you individually, like I said, we are all different. We all have different challenges in life. We've all got different things that, you know, are going around in our minds. Each day brings a new challenge. And sometimes that challenge can slow you down for three days. And sometimes we just need somebody to kick us in our butt or poke us in the forehead or remind us we're doing good or help us see where we're not doing so good. Sometimes it's just about having somebody who's not in our shoes. And I do it all the time. And I got a bunch of good friends on this call that I, I talk to and I, I, uh, I leverage for your advice and your expertise. And I try to just do the same every day because we talk about USP. We talk about the value. My value is in helping you guys build your business, is in helping you guys transform and expand your business, which is exactly, again, what we're going to do starting Tuesday next week on the Mindshare Mastermind. So if you haven't yet, make sure to write down this URL, the msc101.com. We are going to get into everything. I'm going to help you set goals. I'm going to help you manage time. I'm going to help you uh, create a marketing plan that's on budget to make sure you're really building the right amount of mind share. That just told me, okay, that you're really building the right amount of mind share. We're going to go through, create a referral strategy that's going to deliver massive ROI for you. We are going to get into the ins and outs of social media and uh, um, video and online lead generating. I'm going to teach you all of that stuff. And I'm going to show you how to be the community expert so you can drive those new leads as well from, well, the folks that you don't know just yet. It is a complete system. I encourage you guys, there's a promo code available on the site. Go check it out. Again, if you've got questions, get in touch with me. But as we wrap up right now, we went over. How to define your USP. We talked about building mindshare. And I want to remind you that it is a numbers game. Don't just talk to one person. Talk to lots of people. You're probably going to get nine no's before you get a yes. But every time you get that no, instead of being like, ah, oh, man, hanging those shoulders, I want you to sit up straight, get your chin up, smile, and say, I'm that much closer. So 
Everybody, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Aria. I appreciate you guys having me on today. I hope everybody learned a whole bunch of awesome stuff. Um, take it, leverage it. Like I said, let's finish 2020 on a high note. I believe there's a lot of opportunity to make a lot of money. This is my contact info. If you need me, you know where to find me. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.